Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Vertex animation tools with Softbody to Unity. In Houdini here, I have a small setup as you can see. So when I press play, I have this cloth that will actually break up here by an object. So it will actually be torn apart into pieces. So this is a simulation and I would like to have this into Unity and I'm going to use the Vertex animation tool sets. Before I jump into like exporting this and using this in Unity, I'm going to quickly run over the setup here. So we start out by a grid. So this is my main cloth shape. I'm going to give this some more geometry by remeshing this. You can also here use the edge fracture for actually creating where the cloth should be breaking. So, so the edges here are the breaking areas. Then I'm also here creating a side group for actually sticking this so it's not being simulated. So when that is done, I'm going to actually set properties for the cloth configuration. So important here is just to set the pin animation so this will not be simulated. Then we also need to enable a vellum belt and this holds actually the breaking value. So based on this value, the pieces will break quickly or slowly. Then with those properties set up, we then give this into a solver and then we actually have this result. And the sphere itself is just here, this sphere that just moves over time, so nothing special there. So this is my simulation here. And I'm also gonna move this up. So my pivot point is here in the zero position. Um, and that is my simulation. So I have this null node that I'm gonna use and reference to for later. A very important to know is that we can also cache simulations. So if you have something that's a bit more complicated than this simulation, you should definitely cache out your simulation and the tool for vertex animations will also need to know that. So just useful at, a, at this stage to already know if I'm caching the simulation or not. So you could cache it out, but in this case, since it's quite simplistic, I'm not gonna cache it for the moment. So with that animation here, let's switch to our output. So I already have it here. If you don't have this, you can just add a new a menu here and you can just switch to output and then you have the same menu as me. So in here, we're just going to press our Vertex Animation tool set. So make sure we have ZFX Labs installed. And you also watched the previous video about installation before. So with that note, let's open the properties. And we have some properties for this note. So first of all, we need to set a mode and engine. So we are currently going to use the soft body, body mode. This is mainly, again, used for clots or anything else that is a soft body. So important here is that our topology or the poly count stays consistent. So we cannot suddenly move points or uh, add more points over time. So that's important to know. If you are going to add or remove points over time, you have to go with dynamic remeshing. But for now, since we're just breaking this cloth apart, soft body is fine. Then we're also going to go into our game engines and we're going to set this to Unity. So the tool knows that we are going to output Unity information. Then we have our frame range. So it's going to go from one to hundred. We can customize that if you want to. So for my uh, scene, it's actually more than good enough to have hundred frames. And also here, our input geometry, we're going to set that to that null node. So I already had here my clot and we're going to use my add sim. So we have that available. Now let's take a look at the settings. So here we have some specific settings for this mode so we can uh, export the compressed normals into the position alpha if you want that then these are settings that will often appear for each mode that we have so first of all is this toggle that is being asking you if you're caching the geometry which i talked before so we're not actually caching the geometries so i'm gonna disable this also important here is the format so this is hdr we can also set this to non-hdr so this will of course change the bit rate so based on the game engine you have you might change this, but if you're using Unity or Unreal, you can change, you can just keep this to HDR. Then we also have our file format, but I'm going to leave it as this. So most settings here, I'm actually going to leave it as this. I'm not going to change too much settings because by default, it's already give you a good result. So we have some more things we can export. So if you want certain information about colors or uh, other information, you can export this as well. We can also export custom attributes, as you can see here. If you need, for example, the age, but you probably don't have age on the cloth by default or the velocity of certain points, you can export it as well. Then we here have a texture width target. So if you want it to be targeting a certain resolution, 
but I'm actually going to leave it as is. But by default, the tool will actually do a good job at uh, giving this some proper resolution. Then I'm going to go to inputs. And this is basically a menu for what I can input in the tool. So what is required for the tool to work is a position. So each point has a position. So that's by default required here. We can uh, optionally add things like color, UVs, other things. Uh, you can have some more values that you can automatically input in a tool. But most often you will just have position as default. And then if you want to give this a specific color, you can do that as well. Then we're going to go to export. And here we're going to set our path. So this is where my where my file will be located. So I'm going to rename this to, for example, uh, Unity uh, Clot. Then we have our asset naming. So this is actually referencing to the node's name. And we can just call it this like Clot Simulation. So Clot Simulation. Then we can have specific suffix. So here we can have the frame count or the amount of FPS we're using. And this is then here the actual output. So we have a geometry and we have three textures. So position, rotation, color. Uh, and we also have an output for Unity Material. So if you want to have something more specific or you don't need a certain, uh, for, let's say I don't really want to use the colors, I'm only need actually position or rotation. So we can change that. Uh, what is good to know here is that uh, the FPS. So here, as you could see, like we can add this to the suffix naming. Uh, so here, all the way down, we can actually see our Houdini FPS. So right now it's set to 24. So that's the defaults here in Houdini. If you want this to be actually at 60 FPS, you can uh, fill in 60 and then uh, you can export this at 60 FPS. Uh, then we have some advanced settings. I'm not going to touch uh, those settings. We also have target engine. I'm not going to touch these settings. And then here we have our actually guide and packages for installation. So if you're not sure what you're doing, click on this button and it will uh, help you with some information. So we are basically done with the settings. And like I said, we're going to leave most settings by default and we are ready to press render. So if everything went right, you should have this folder. So we have our geometry file, we have our texture files. So these three textures, and we have specifically for Unity, a material function or a material setup file. So with that, we're going to then go into Unity. So here I'm in Unity and I'm actually using a quite latest version. So I'm using Unity uh, 2021.2.0b9. So you use something that is very new because there are some special features or unique features that we're actually going to use. So I already here have my folders. So I want to have my soft body simulation and I'm going to import my files here. So in this case, I can actually just select everything and just copy it over to Unity. You could also decide to directly export this into Unity. That's also something you could do. And now I have this uh, folder structure as well. So importantly, first is go to our geometry and we need to give this a specific properties. So if you have the so if everything installed correctly, we can actually go here to presets. So I can just double click on this preset and press apply. So now I have my mesh correctly imported. I can just drag it here in my scene. So let me move it a bit here in the middle. Then let's go to our textures. I'm going to select all of them. We're going to again click on our preset button and we're going to use our vertex animation. And it's now important that we are selecting here the HDR one. So here HDR, and I'm going to press apply. So of course the HDR is referencing here to what we had enabled here. So if you had non HDR, you're going to have to set the non HDR in there as well. Then lastly, here we have our material. So here we have our material. And the only thing we need to do is to set our textures. So by default, it will automatically use the shader from the soft bodies. So that is something that is installed by the package. And we only need to plug in our materials. So let me here click on the lock. Let's go to my textures. And we're going to here have our colors in the color, of course. We're going to drag our position in the position number one, not the position number two. Be careful with that. And we're also going to have our rotation here in the rotation. So these are my three textures now being used in the system. This is ready. And I can just drag my material and drag it on the cloth. So that should be working. So what you could see now is that it actually like sometimes stops and not updates. Uh, so currently here with my Unity, actually, if I move in the scene, everything will update like it should be. 
this is something with Unity by default here that it's not going to update if I'm not interacting with the viewport. So here it's actually just playing fine uh, and as expected. So if I now would press play, I can actually see that everything works as expected. I have that perfect simulation here, the exact same result inside of Unity here. So by now everything should be working fine. There are some more settings we can play around with, so it's automatically going to play. Uh, we can set a certain uh, splay speed, some, uh, certain frames, uh, or FPS is the same as in Houdini. Uh, we can have frame interpolation, uh, color interpolation, some interesting settings here. And there are some more settings down here. So it is also recommended here to put the shader switches here is to disable the ones that you're not really using. So it will just like help the shader calculate faster. So some of these switches enabling them will actually add uh, a bit more to the shader. So it's just important to know is that if you don't use, for example, the load color texture, then don't need to spend extra resource calculating it. So important as well is you might be interested in editing the shader because you might want to add a few more things. So we can here press edit and it will actually open here your uh, shader. So I would recommend you not editing here directly. I would go here to the package and you will find here your shaders and actually make a copy of the graph. So very importantly, just make a copy and put it here into your folders of your project assets. It's just important that you're not overwriting these. I can heavily recommend you doing that. Also a bit more understanding of this graph. So here we have our main node, which is calculating uh, some of that vertex animation. And the output here and directly goes here in the vertex. And if I want to, for example, plug this in into, for example, my base color, I actually need to create a node uh, that sort of goes from the vertex to the fragment here. So this is sort of a custom interpolator doing that for us. So it's basically here. So this node is basically here getting that value. So we cannot just directly input that here. So that's important to know is that we need to use this node. So this is just a bit more information about. So importantly is make a copy if you want to adjust it. So that was it for this video. We took the clot simulation from Houdini into Unreal with Vertex Animation. So hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.